Grant Robertson. Can I have his two minutes that he didn't take? <laughs> Grant Robertson, just a minute. Get into it. <laughs> Mr Speaker, uh, earlier in my working life, I had the honour of being a, an advisor in the office of Helen Clark. And during that period of time, one of the jobs that I uh, had was to work on the China Free Trade Agreement. And in particular, one of the jobs that I had was to work with stakeholders across the community on their views on the China Free Trade Agreement. And there were, there were people with very, very strong views coming to the table. People from, from industry, from primary industries, from manufacturing, people from the union movement, the engineers and the printing and manufacturing union, environmental groups. And the Labour Party took seriously the job that we had on behalf of the people of New Zealand to have a discussion with them about trade and about what New Zealand could benefit from in the China Free Trade Agreement and about the challenges and the risks within the China Free Trade Agreement. That was an important job, a leadership role that the government could show. And so as we worked our way through the China Free Trade Agreement, public support for it grew. And so by the time it was signed, yes, there were still people with concerns about it, but fundamentally it enjoyed public support. And a big part of that was because we took New Zealanders with us. We weren't so arrogant as to think, we know everything and we don't need to bring the public with us. Because that's the approach of this national government on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And Mr Speaker, Tim Grosser is a bit of a figure of fun sometimes in this House, or he has been in this House. I'm always reminded of the quote um, from Mike Moore that the problem with Tim Grosser is that he didn't get enough credit for splitting the atom. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of thing that people have said about Tim Grosser. But today, for me, for day for me the, the humour that sometimes was generated by Tim Grosser goes into the background because of how he's let down New Zealand with the way this process was undertaken. In secret, without conversation with New Zealanders, without bringing New Zealanders along with them. And one of the main concerns that members of parliament right across this house, I would judge, have heard from people about the TPP is the feeling that somehow or other the interests of corporations are more important than the interests of citizens. That's what people have been saying. I don't, I don't expect Mr Muller to agree with me on that, but I'm saying to him that's what he will have heard, because that's how New Zealanders feel when there's this inside route, this inside access that gets you influence over the government, be it Ken Whitney on trusts or be it people on the inside of these negotiations, but that most New Zealanders, ordinary citizens of New Zealand, haven't been brought along with this agreement. And that is the responsibility of the government and that is the responsibility of Mr Grosser. Because as my colleague David Clark said, the Labour Party is proud of the trade agreements that we have been a part of. Right back to the first Labour government, right back to Walter Nash and Peter Fraser, who said, we know that we need to support our exporters, and we agree and we fought for that, Mr. Mr. Speaker. But the fundamental point that the government doesn't want to acknowledge about the TPP is that it's not a trade agreement. It is not a trade agreement. It is an agreement about investment and regulation, and ultimately it is an agreement that on this side of the House, the Labour Party regretfully cannot support. Because we would wanted to have supported an agreement that opens up market access, that gives our exporters a greater chance on the world stage. But then when we contrast that with the agreement that sits in front of us today, we cannot support it. Now, we could, my colleague David Clark has gone into the fact that, that actually it's a poor agreement in many ways, particularly in the case of dairy. The very sector that Tim Grosser stood up and he said, if there's not a good deal for dairy, we're walking away. That's what he said. If there's not a good deal for dairy, I'll be happy to walk away. And he ends up with a deal on dairy that's worth the output of three farms. There you go. And he's prepared to trade away all sorts of things for three, the output of three farms. He told New Zealanders that. He told New Zealanders that if it was a bad deal for dairy, he would walk away. It's a terrible deal for dairy. 
But Mr. It is a terrible deal for Dior. But Mr. Speaker, that is all dwarfed by a fundamental concept for us in the Labor Party. And that is the ability of a future government to take a decision in New Zealand's national interest to limit offshore buyers from buying existing residential property. This is Labor Party policy. It's been Labor Party policy for several years. That is the policy that we have taken out to New Zealanders because they are, Mr Speaker, rightly worried about an out-of-control housing market where buyers from offshore exert a disproportionate influence on the housing market. With deeper pockets, they come and they push up the prices. People are worried. Labor's got a clear, direct policy to deal with that, a ban on offshore buyers from buying existing residential property. The Australians do it. The Australians are in the agreement. They've protected their right to do it. Vietnam hasn't actually implemented the policy yet, but they protected their right to do it. But the New Zealand government went into these negotiations and failed to do that. Now, this is the issue that upsets us, but you can take this issue more widely, Mr Speaker. Why have we all come to this House as MPs? We've come here because we've come here on the basis of saying we want to do things to improve the well-being of New Zealanders. Our job as parliamentarians is to come here and make laws, pass policies, pass budgets that will do things for New Zealanders. And today, the government expects us to vote for a piece of legislation that effectively enables them to stop us from doing that, to stop us from putting in place a policy that we fundamentally believe to be important. And that, Mr Speaker, is why the Labor Party cannot support this bill, because fundamentally it should be the right of this parliament in, to make the decision to put a ban on offshore buyers from buying property, and this, and this government has failed to do that for us, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the government seems to think that their big, exciting ploy here, Mark Mitchell's entire speech to go through and read out all about what different Labor Party members might think about this or that, and then, you know, his clever little tactics that he's putting up here. Stop playing games, Mr Mitchell. Stop playing games and give an honest debate about why you think New Zealanders should support this agreement. Because that's what people want to hear. That's what people want to hear. They don't want to hear your speculation about the Labor Party. Stop playing political games with this bill. Stop playing political games. Stand up and explain to New Zealanders why it is that you've taken away the right of a future government to legislate in New Zealand's interests with respect to the offshore uh, buyers of residential, existing residential property. Because, Mr Speaker, that's what this comes, at, comes down to for those of us on the Labor Party side. We have a fundamental belief in the importance of the democratic process. We have a fundamental belief in the rights of New Zealanders to make laws for themselves and our interests. That is what we should do. We support exporters. We support good quality free trade agreements. What we don't support are a poor agreements signed off in secret by a government not interested in taking the New Zealand people with them. This government knows today they think they're being clever. They think they can play little political games about this. It's more important than that, Mr Speaker. This government should be bringing to this House an agreement that where New Zealanders have been brought along with them, where New Zealanders have an understanding of the agreement, where New Zealanders know that their rights and interests have been protected. Instead, they find themselves asking most New Zealanders, whose side is this government on? Are they on the side of ordinary New Zealanders, hard-working New Zealanders, or are they on the side of the very fortunate few who got the inside access and who get the inside running with this government? We need good quality trade agreements, ones that create jobs, ones that support New Zealanders' rights, ones that fundamentally uphold democracy, and sadly, tragically for New Zealand, this government has failed that test. Order. I just want to order. I just want to bring a couple of men, um, items to the notice of the House. And the first is uh, Speaker's Ruling 68.5, and the second is Speaker's Ruling 69.2, which is about interjection. So the debate in this bill is going to be wide. You're going to be given a lot of latitude to be able to 
um, to be able to draw attention to the issues that members wish to do so. But there was not going to be a whole lot of latitude for people constantly interjecting, repeating phrases, asking questions of the person who's on their feet. I remind the House of the findings of previous speakers, particularly my personal favourite, uh, Speaker Hunt, who said <laughs> that, um, funny enough, um, who said that interjections should be rare and reasonable and hopefully witty. So a barrage that comes from either side, depending who's on their feet at the time, is not in order. Courtesy is contagious and so are a number of other afflictions. I call Jamie Lee 